Good morning all. I've been working on the penny organ uh, to turn it into a chord organ. What I want in the fullness of time is to be able to toggle using one of these uh, coins between a polyphonic keyboard and a keyboard which just produces chords. Now it's in chord mode at the moment. In other words, I've got the chord software loaded and it sounds like this. So each uh, coin plays a four note chord and I've got all these uh, inputs a semitone apart now in preparation for putting in the bronze coins which will act as the black notes on the keyboard. I'm going to reduce these eight white notes down to seven, uh, probably remove that one, and uh, add in five bronze coins. So that will be the 12 semitones in an octave. Uh, also the other four inputs that are working so you can as well as these we've got uh, those as well. Now they're all, uh, I think they're minor chords at the moment, that's how I left the software, um, but I can set them to major. Uh, so the software, I'm just doing camera to screen uh, today because I uh, don't want to do screen capture. Uh, the software has these expressions uh, in the shift out commands which do the uh, conversion from a long integer conversion of the uh, frequency the frequency starts off being a float, it's multiplied by another float, then it's turned into a long integer, and then I break it all up bit using these bitwise instructions. Uh, so this one takes the frequency of the key itself. This one adds uh, three semitones higher, so that's a minor third. This one adds seven semitones higher, so that's a perfect fifth. And there's another one below which adds 12 semitones higher, so that's a full octave. So if I change this I plus three, to I plus four, we'll get major chords. And uh, that sounds slightly different. Those are the major chords, let's do the other four notes. So major chords using uh, a major third instead of a minor third. Now just a quick word about these expressions here. I discovered when I was looking through the C or C++ uh, operator precedence rules that uh, a bit shift, which is this double arrow, has a higher priority than the bitwise and and the bitwise or. So I thought, okay, well, I'll put the bit shift first. And actually that made things a lot easier. So I'm just taking, uh, I'm just doing the bit shift to put the bits that I'm interested in uh, into the lowest eight bit positions. And then I'm just masking them with these relatively uh, low value masks. So I'm using an AND here to, uh, what would it do? Yeah, force a certain bit low, and I'm using an OR here to force, force a certain bit high, and it all got quite easy. And uh, down here, I'm only actually interested in the lower eight bits. You can see I've got a mask here which sets those lower, lower eight bits uh, to remain, which is the FF. All the others are removed by putting in zeros. But I've actually commented it out because Interestingly, shift out is only expecting um, a byte, an 8-bit byte. So it itself ignores the remaining bits of this long. So I don't actually need to do this masking, but I've left it in there to remind myself how this works. But uh, yeah, I can just shift out this long value and it actually only shifts out the lower 8 bits of it. So I'm starting to warm to C. I've always hated it, but... Uh, it's just a familiarity really when you get to know uh, the way you can do things and how easily you can do it and how compact you can make your code, you start to like it a bit more. Now in terms of hardware, um, this MPR121 12 input capacitive touch switch is going to be completely used up for the 12 um, semitones on this keyboard, five, uh, seven white notes and five black notes. So I need another one of these MPR121 boards. Now when I bought uh, some of these, two out of the three I bought I think were faulty. So I want one more and I've actually purchased five just in case, uh, they're very cheap, I mean they're only a, a dollar and a half each or something, uh, just in case there are more failures. I need another one of these AD9833 uh, waveform generators because one is making a funny noise. I did a video on that uh, recently. Uh, so then these um, toggle keys here will be will use the second MPR121. And uh, round the back, there's this little uh, mixer, which is just four resistors on a piece of Vero board 
and a capacitor and I'm using crop clips to link it through to the speaker. Now I went to my local hack space the other day and um, in a noisy environment this was really quiet. It sounds quite loud at home. I think one way to boost the sound would be if I was using both inputs on the amplifier. I'd get twice the sound level I guess. So I really want to do something around the back of this unit to smarten all this up and have a socket which I can plug the uh, amplifier directly into. Uh, so I've ordered some of these. Um, it's a little fiberglass PCB with a couple of RCA phonos, uh, 3.5 millimeter jack, which is the one I'll use for that cable that goes to the active speaker. Uh, it's also paralleled onto a three pin JST and a three pin terminal block. So it's quite versatile for hooking up audio to bits of wire, which is exactly what I need around the back of the penny organ. So that will uh, screw on the back here. I can uh, put it on a couple of standoffs, put it on the back, and then the amplifier can just plug in neatly into that unit. I'll just uh, munge this little mixer unit. All it is is four resistors to mix the four audio signals on green, yellow, uh, orange, and red. And then brown is, is ground, I think. Yeah, brown goes off to uh, a ground pin on the Arduinos. Yeah, so I just want a, a neater uh, way of connecting the audio around the back of this unit so it's not all dangly wires. Now, just back to the code for a minute. Uh, you may have noticed that, um, well, I'm now doing major chords, so it's uh, four semitones for the major third, seven semitones for the perfect fifth. Um, I'm also using these modulos and uh, they're currently set to 25, so nothing happens. If I set those to modulo 12, and, uh, I, and I is a number which, when four is added to it, uh, goes over 12, then it will subtract 12. That's how the modulo works. And that produces automatic chord inversions. So I'll set these back to 12, and uh, we'll see what it sounds like. And uh, it sounds like this. So what's happening is, as the uh, highest note, which is an octave above the low note, uh, goes out of range of this modulo 12 thing, what happens is it wraps around and drops down an octave. Um, so probably what is, is resulting here is we're getting root, third, fifth, octave. The octave is then becoming a duplication of the root. So that may not be ideal. Yeah, I might have to work on that a bit. Right now, as I say, I want this uh, top coin here, which will be on the other 12 input touch switch, to be able to uh, switch the unit between a poly organ, a polyphonic organ, and a chord organ. So let's imagine it's there and switch it back to polyphonic organ, and this is what it sounds like. So you can add uh, one key plays one note. but you can add up to four notes and they're just um, added to a table of currently playing frequencies. And then as you release keys, you release notes. Like so. Okay, magic of video, let's switch it back to the chord organ. And uh, in this mode, pressing a key presses a full four note chord. In a uh, well, there will be 12. I can play these other four, but not with coins at the moment. Uh, there will be 12 different semitones, so you can play a chord in any key. And then there will be a modifier to change it from major. Press the modifier to minor, which sounds like this. Back to major, which sounds like that. And then uh, another key will be for introducing the seventh note. Um, now, I learned recently that there are two sevenths. There's a major seventh and a minor seventh. And in fact, I actually learned that uh, from my mate Brett's video, because he did a video about uh, creating seventh chords. So I just need to have another watch of that, I think. I'll put a link in the description below so that you can have a watch of that video as well. But uh, that tells you all about how major and minor seventh chords are produced. Uh, so I think from watching that video, uh, this is the major chord, which is uh, the first note, uh, a note four semitones above, a note seven semitones above, and a note 12 semitones above. And if I change that 12 semitones to 11 
Semitones, I should get the seventh. Let's try it. So that should be the seventh. Let's try a minor seventh. So here's the minor chord. And now the minor seventh. And that's that. So that's uh, root three semitones above, seven semitones above, and ten semitones above. So yeah, interesting. So these will be, as I say, a chord and poly organ switch, third switch, seventh switch, and various other coins, if I can find some more kroner, for doing other interesting uh, chord changes, like the inversions that I was showing earlier, and also maybe some octave shifts, octave down and octave up, possibly. Anyway, all good fun. Um, I can't do much now until the new hardware appears. Uh, let's just take it out of minor, take it out of seventh. So it's back to major now. Uh, so uh, for the moment, that's really it. I'll uh, do some more updates when the new hardware comes in and when I've made significant changes to the software. So really today, I was just mucking about. Cheerio.